infrastructure really represents an industry trend of homogenization of data center hardware resources and, and a shift in value from customized hardware resources through to value in software where software is used to control, orchestrate and deliver services, uh, deliver ID services. That looks like a busy slide, but it isn't really to test anyone's eyesight as such. Uh, but the point I'm uh, trying to say is that this is how an S um, IDC SDI architecture looks like. And um, if you go to see, SDI really represents an industry trend that started 10 years ago with virtualization. Hypervisor technologies really allowed multiple workloads to be run on a shared resource, on a shared uh, infrastructure. And um, uh, SDI really represents carrying that forward to other com important components of the data center, such as storage and networking. So API interfaces really allow these kind of virtualized workloads to, to be managed and automated and set policies and manage them from a software layer without depending on specific custom hardware. And software-defined infrastructure really takes that one step forward by making the entire uh, data center infrastructure much more software-oriented. So, uh, so the SDI uh, market really comprises of software-defined compute, storage, networking, as well as the control software on top of it, which, which manages the entire data center infrastructure. If you go to see, compute still represents the big portion of software-defined infrastructure, and that's really because of the maturity that virtualization has achieved, and it's been around for a longer time. But we see that the growth for the next, um, for the next five years is, is really going to be in software-defined storage and software-defined networking, as well as the control software. And the growth in uh, compute software, it's still going to be a large market, but the growth is going to be much slower there. And I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about software-defined storage um, as such, because I think that's what matters to a lot of people in this room. <laughs> So uh, software-defined storage really upholds all the characteristics of a software-defined infrastructure. So they are uh, scalable, they are highly dynamic, they are highly automated, and they, there are different service delivery models. So a software-defined storage controller software can be either block-based, file-based, object-based, which means it can accommodate value of volume and variety, different varieties of data and as different data center technologies and different applications enter the data center. And uh, they can be they can be used as an appliance, or they can be used as a DIY technique, where you take software-defined storage controller software and use it with uh, your own commodity server-based hardware and make a software-defined infrastructure yourself. So, how does the EMEA software-defined storage market look like? So, we see that these uh, by 2019, the software-defined storage controller, the software market is going to grow uh, to 300 and over three, uh, $322 million mark and uh, maximum growth is going to come from Western Europe, especially in the year 2017 when we see a lot more use cases are going to emerge by then and a lot more enterprises and a lot more vendors are going to uh, participate in that. And um, one important point I really want to highlight here is that um, the competition in software defined storage market is really red hot. So you have traditional storage vendors like NetApp and IBM and EMC fighting uh, in this space, but you also have virtualization vendors like VMware and Microsoft competing in the same space. And then you have startups like Nexenta and Nutanix attacking the place. And then uh, in, when, you, when you take a step back and look at the software-defined infrastructure market, you have Telefonica and you have Intel and everybody competing in the same, same space. So it's a very hot market but it really belongs to those who are going to keep up the momentum and innovation. And um, another point... This is for storage only? This is for storage only. And, and what are the products that are in the number? Yeah, so um, you, you have uh, IBM's SVC, your products like SVC, and you have uh, Data Core and Falcon Store, and um, I have a list of vendors who are... Uh, it, it's really storage virtualization software, but which does not have any hardware dependencies as such. So those are the products we categorize here. Um, and uh, another point I really want to highlight, uh, in, especially in this, um, in this market, is that although you see a software-defined storage market growing, uh, within that entire infrastructure market, we see the software portion growing faster than the hardware portion. <coughs> so we, we think that the software revenues will be will be growing at 30% uh, CAGR compared to 20% CAGR in the hardware portion 
of uh, of software defined infrastructure and that that is really important because until 2014 hardware kind of commanded the lion's share of the software defined infrastructure market but that is really changing and that really represents a represents the shift in the uh, data center market as newer workloads come in that enterprises and vendors see that see the true value in having a software oriented approach so this really is the blueprint so when done right um, a software defined infrastructure will be elastic it will be open it will be agile and it will really be suitable to take care and to power the newer generation of workloads and um, uh, the three recommendations i would like to uh, leave you with is um, is to address the key concerns around software defined infrastructure to improve its uptake and 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 the first um, uh, the first set of inhibitors is really the lack of in-house IT skills and the cost of migration that enterprises quote time and time again in our conversations as, as, as some of the key reasons for not adopting a software defined infrastructure. So having conversations around how your solutions can help them uh, overcome these kind of challenges will help them enable, will enable them or facilitate them to adopt software defined infrastructure faster. And the second point is that a lot of early adopters believe that software defined infrastructure will help them to accelerate their cloud adoption. So again, having conversations on how exactly the solutions or providing PUCs and on how, the, how your solutions will enable them to move to a cloud in, at a faster pace will also help in, um, in, in moving your solutions. And the last part I want to say is that software defined storage is really not for everyone. So if it's an organization, it's a really small business, then they're likely to adopt public cloud services for non-critical systems, and then they will go through their traditional data center refresh cycles. But it, it's really um, identifying enterprises that have a vision for digital transformation, that have a vision to, to welcome newer kind of workloads that have dynamic requirements, because that's what software-defined infrastructure is most suited for. Thank you.